today, I'd like to introduce to you Paul, who is better known as Nobby, actually. And he's here to champion creativity within uh, content marketing, which I'm so excited about because that's kind of uh, my bag as well. So Nobby is a creative director, and he's also a consultant and coach helping agency owners to boost their creative confidence. We actually met a couple of years ago at a Gatwick uh, Diamond event or series of events, um, and we've recently reconnected here in Worthing. So please welcome Nobby. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, I walked in the room and James, I, I worked with James years ago at a, an agency in a galaxy far, far away. Um, it was a long time ago, maybe 15 years ago, I'd imagine, something like that. Uh, so, yeah, so um, uh, thanks for James and Denise for your talks. They were very, very enlightening. Um, so I'm here to talk about creativity. Um, I've been colouring in for a living since 1978. That's what my mum used to call it. She didn't have a night, didn't have a clue about what I did for a living. I tried to talk to her, I tried to tell her, and she just didn't, didn't want to know. So um, it's always she, oh, we've been colouring in again. And it's, yeah, mum. <laughs> and that was right up until she died. She still thought I did the same thing. Uh, she didn't buy me pencils for Christmas, so that was nice. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, so th I've been been in the business a long, long time. Um, I'm founder of a, a little um, collective, really. It's um, called Doobie Doo. Um, and I work with all sorts of different people on all sorts of different things. Um, as you can see, I've worked at, sorry, I've worked at quite a lot of the big agencies, worldwide agencies. Um, so a lot of experience, and I've worked on most brands, most sectors. Um, there's not a lot I haven't done, really. Your I think the end. Sorry, your one's bigger than mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only people I haven't worked for is Apple. I think. So that's. Uh, I think it's just quite a hard gig to get. But anyway, that's sort of a cross section of what I work for. So let's go for a ride. Um, we talk about content. We talk about creativity being the optimal fuel, and how to navigate tricky conditions. And regular servicing pays off. So, <coughs> content. Quite simply, it's a it's a vehicle for delivering ideas. I truly believe that you you sh every everything you do should have an idea in it. Should have an element of creativity. If it doesn't, there's a good chance it's going to get overlooked. So many things in this day and age are bland. We live in a, gr a greyish society. Everything's black and white. I mean, the cars we buy, black cars, white cars, grey cars. You know, very rarely do you see a coloured car. I mean, the top three selling cars last year were black, white, grey or silver. You know, what's happening? Our politics is grey. Everything's really, really grey and boring. So when it comes to advertising and content, because content is basically advertising, if you don't if you don't stand out, you're going to fall by the wayside. So we use as many as many tricks to get people's attention. Um, content is marketing communication. You do choose generally to spend time with it. So you've sort of got a little bit of buying. So you've got a little bit of brand, maybe brand loyalty or just interest. But if you're not interested, if the content inside is not going to spin your hubs, you're not going to stay there. You'll go somewhere else until somebody else comes along and says, hi, I'm here, and doing it in a different way, giving you content that you actually engage with, then you're going you're gonna to move over to that side and quickly diss or bin the people that you've been maybe loyal to. It can be anything you want it to be, from a tweet, e-book, immersive version experience, newsletter, full-blown feature film. I mean, Lego, the, the movie, is, a, is content. It's all it is. It's just content. It's content that people, this is the genius, that people buy to go to see. That's amazing. You know, just coming up with that thought, that's really different. That's really creative. Let's make a movie with our product. Genius. Um, other things that, you know, like um, 
Red Bull are really good. They've got, they've got themselves into the, the sports that are extreme sports. And they just made themselves into this, this, the, the people that make the content for these sports. So it's, it's synonymous with like extreme things. The, 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 um, the, the skydive from, um, was it 10, how many miles up? The moon, um, the, um, what's it called? I can't remember the name of it. It's a, Oh. Yeah, the guy that jumped out of the, the, the thing and sort of like came down to and that's amazing, that's content, it's all content, but it's, it, that sort of stuff needs thinking about. Content without our ideas simply isn't content. Um, people need to be informed, moved, engaged, and ultimately change their behaviour. Change their behaviour is to change them to buy your product, because at the end of the day, I'm a salesman. I'm a creative, but at the end of the day, I was told this when I was very, very young by an experienced creative director. He said to me, you're just a salesman. And I said, no, I'm not. I'm a creative. I come up with ideas. No, 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 no. You've got to sell products or service at the end of the day. So you're a salesman. Go out and learn to sell. So actually, I did. I went and worked in a menswear shop for a year. And I learned a lot about selling there. It's a completely different ball game. So... You know, instead of colouring in, I went out and told some things. So, actually, I do have that experience of being the salesman, so I know what to do. The optimal fuel. Great ideas on brand, beautifully crafted with thought and creativity should be the heart of everyone's content strategy. Sadly, that's not always the case. Creativity may well be the last legal unfair competitive advantage we can take to run over the competition. It's a guy called Dave Trott, who's a very, very famous creative director. He's had his own agencies. He's produced some, some amazing work over the years that you would have seen. Um, and he was a guy that I spent, um, he was the guy that told me I should need to be a salesman. So it's, um, I learned a lot from him and I still do. I still follow his blogs actually. This is a good quote. Um, from a St Stefan Vogel of Ogilvy and Maver, Germany, and it, it just says what it, you know. What it says that creativity lo lasts longer; it's more engaging. So negotiating um, tricky conditions: uh, the brief, time, idea generation, execution, and brand. Now the brief. Now, I don't, how many people here actually produce content? Um, if you get the brief right in the beginning, it's, gonna, it's, a, it's a contract, it's a blueprint. It gives you the, the steering for what you need to do. So it's a very, very short form, but who your target audience is, the features and benefit of, of the service or product you're selling, an insight or truth that, is, that you can find. Um, that when, Once you've got that, that's, that's really key. You can then shout that one particular thing, which is sort of moves into proposition. You shout that one thing and, and tell everybody about it. It's the it's the really the key thing is the insight, truth, proposition part of it. Time. This it's always always comes down to time. If you can be given enough time to write the brief or have the brief written for you to come up with ideas and to ex execute those ideas, you need time to do that. It's best to, to get the brief, think about it, let it incubate overnight. Uh, that's the best, it, you can get ideas subliminally in your sleep. Even sometimes if you write the idea down or write, write the brief down, the problem you have, the business problem you have, and stick it under your your pillow. It sounds weird, but sometimes you wake up in the morning and a little fairy's come along and written it in for you or drawn a little picture. So that's preparation, a brief incubation, that period of, of thinking about it, letting it go, um, and then you get the inspiration to come up with the idea, get that idea, and then verifying that idea. So that's why when you've chosen, you know, come up with as many ideas as you possibly can for each particular brief, and then choose which ones are right, which fit the, um, the profile, which fit your audience, which fit the proposition. Um, coming up with ideas, um, creative ideas, is problem solving with two parts. You've got relevance, 
in one part, and that's utility and appropriateness. They're, they're, that's part of the brief. That's the things you've got to have in the brief. Like it's, uh, it does this, it does that, it aims at these people, blah, 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 blah. You can just, if you try and just use that, you're just going to end up with a very bland piece of communication. And it doesn't matter what the communication is, it could be any type of communication. If you just go on the relevant side, you're not going to get much traction. You add originality into it, that's where the thinking comes, that's where the crazy ideas sometimes come, and that's the novelty. Types of ideas. Generally when you, when you get a brief, what, what will happen is that, that memories will be the first thing that you have. So it'll be the first, things, the first sort of ideas that come into your head will be a mixture of memories, obvious and cliché. Um, so your memories might be, they, they might have some sort of past knowledge of that product or service or something to do with that, and that can go down as an idea. And you write that down. I, I'm a great believer in just getting everything down on paper in very, very scrawled form, whether in notation, notated form or drawn form. Just get them down, move on to the next one. Because you're going to come across, across obvious ideas, and this is the trouble. When we get to, we think we've come up with an idea that will work, we will then start to plan that idea out and start to do it, where we haven't actually explored the next part, which I'll come to in a minute. But obvious and cliche, things like, you see, you see, we used to have a, um, a piece of paper, a document in every, quite a few agencies I worked in. We pin it on the wall. And if you came out of any of those ideas, you would find five pounds for it. If you showed your creative director any of those ideas, you'd be pulled up. And those things included chess pieces, jigsaw puzzles, um, uh, Swiss army knives, um, all the cliches that you can think of. And if someone pulled them up, you'd go, hello, get your five pounds out for charity. And it works. It's, you know, people don't show you stuff like that. Um, but there's nothing wrong with putting them down to start off with because you've got to clear all that sort of stuff out. This is what happens. To you, up here, you start to come up with quality and time. So you get to the relevant bits. So you've got all those relevant ideas with a few cliches, with a few obvious, da da da. And then you come, it's a bit, bit like your throne of disillusionment, was it? Oh, sorry, the. Oh, the trough, the trough of dissolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very similar sort of place to be, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the hype's gone and everyone's yeah, disappointed and you've, depressed. You've, gone, you've, you've got to this point, you're excited, and then you, suddenly it's like four of them, I can't do this, I can't think of this, and it's keeping you awake, maybe. You're going, oh, what shall I do? I can't do this. I suffer from it today. I suffer from it all the time. It's just part of my creativity. I know I'm going to hit here, and I can stay there if I want, but I don't, because if I pull myself out, out, I will come to more original, more big, and sometimes this is where it all gets silly. This is where the Throne of Agony was where the two guys that came up with meerkats was at one point. They were sitting there, and I know this because I know the guy that runs the agency. They went to the pub, and they had a couple of pints, and they, they looked at the thought and they said, compare the market. One went, compare the meerkat. Meerkat, ah, and it started off as a joke, and they started to push the joke. And it's something that sort of, like it or not, it's you know, nearly 10 years of brilliant work across all channels, because it fits all channels. It's, it's, it, he was, Alexander was the first advertising character to have a Facebook page. So that's where you get all as we call it, the gravy is all around here. And my job as a creative director is, if I've got teams working for me, is to kick those teams into this area because I know it's going to happen. And, and, and if, I, if I can really do it, I'll let them come down again and give them another push. So that's where the time comes in. You need a little bit more time. So you can do this yourself. Um, I can help people do this because I train people to do this. So it can be done. It's just a matter of sort of putting yourself out there. I've got methods where I, I use different things to, I, I do different things to come up with different ideas because I've done it for years, but I've got different methodologies. So the next part is just the, execu the execution, which is doing the nuts and bolts stuff, you know, the design of it. You've got to stand out, you've got to look good. Uh, the copywriting, you've got to, I mean, if you can, if you can afford to use a proper advertising or a uh, proper writer, then do, because it's, it's so much better. They're so, they're so much quicker. 
they get it. Photography, you can get, you can get decent photography now online. It, 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 the trouble is it tends to be a bit cliched or it can be overused. And I know, for instance, there's two companies in, in the Gatwick area that are using exactly the same picture on their um, homepage. And they're in the same area, and it's exactly the same picture because they bought it off a, you know, uh, Shutterstock or something like that. For Shutterstock is full of chess two. pieces. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then film, you, you know, you, photography you can do yourself as well. You know, <coughs> phones nowadays can make fantastic photographs. I'd recommend for every time go and get a photographer and film. You can shoot it yourself. You can be taught to shoot it yourself and edit it yourself, but to be honest, go and see James. It'll be a lot better for you. Wouldn't it, mate? Absolutely. Where do I send the invoice? Uh, or illustration. So that's the execution part. And then you've always got to remember brand. You know, it's got to be on brand. It's got to have the brand values. Um, it's got to have the right tone of voice as well. Whatever it is, the right tone of voice. If you get the wrong tone to your audience, and you, you, you know, it's, you've lost them. And then brand guidelines, making sure you keep within those brand guidelines that the logo is not on its side or wrong way around or whatever. Make sure that that's all stuff where you get the brand police on you, which is a, not a nice experience. Um, regular servicing. I, if you're doing this yourself, I would say m make yourself, become hyper-observant. Look at everything, listen to everything. Be on the lookout for... For little ideas, you, you can take ideas and reappropriate them for yourselves. There's nothing wrong with that. Just like, don't nick ideas, take it and look, or build on it. If you want to become a better writer, then go and write in someone's style. Just try and write an article as X person or Y person. Look at their style, look at the way that they phrase things. Um, I was being hyper observant. I'm always looking. I'm always looking around and up and down, look around everywhere. Everywhere I go, I'm looking. And this morning, six o'clock this morning, I'm taking a picture of a dog poo bin because it had beautiful frost on it. Because I, I'm, I'm alive to everything going on. I just saw on there. I was looking at the. What do you want to see in Worthing? Des O'Connor. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> they were someone to see Des O'Connor. I was over, had a cup of coffee over the road, and there was a, a lady dressed as an elf, and she was explaining to this little, uh, to this little family that she's doing. That she's the, uh, she's employed as an elf this time of year, and uh, I thought it was lovely. And she was talking about the best Father Christmas in Worthing, and apparently the best Father Christmas in Worthing has not only got the beard, it's not only got the right kit, but he smells of Christmas. <laughs> That's lovely. That's that is being hyper observant. That's getting creativity right. I don't know his name. There's only one Father Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to be very disappointed soon, James. <laughs> so all these things to get sort of um, inspiration from movies, TV, magazines, books, um, internet, podcasts. I've become a real big podcast um, listener. I just get a lot of joy out of podcasts. Um, galleries. I, I, I'm a member at the Tate. It costs £110 a year and you can go and use the members um, part and you can do meetings up there. So it's great to have a London based, if you want a London based little slot and you, you can take two people in or take, take another person into any of the um, exhibitions. So it's quite nice if you want to meet a client and say, thanks you're going to see blah blah and then take them around. So it's a, it's a really cool place to go. Um, and outside, I get a lot of my inspiration outside in nature. I've got three dogs. I walk them every morning. I do a couple of miles through the forest, and it's just like gives me my grounding for the day, blasts me up, gets me going. And then culture itself is just trying to mine things or see things, take pictures. Keep a notebook. I keep a notebook on me. I get them from Tiger Tiger, those little, that little shop in Brighton. They cost a pound for three. And I walk around with one, and if I see something, I write it down. If I hear something, I write it down. If I get an idea, I draw it down. And it's there. And then I, I file things later. You know, and a lot of it's up there. But it's because I'm open all the time to looking at different things. So this is my little creative mantra that, um, that, that Doobie Doo believes in. And I'll leave you, I'll leave you to read that.
And uh, if you want to know any more, just come and ask me about anything about advertising, branding, design. I uh, mentor people now and I coach creativity um, with workshops, talks, one-to-ones, group, etc. And that's my number. And come and ask for a card. And thank you very much.